Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Bill Lamy. I'm one of the co-founders of Express Logic and also a program manager now with uh, Microsoft on the Azure RTOS product. Uh, it's great to be here today. I have a, a brief overview of Azure RTOS um, in conjunction with uh, ST. Um, and I guess let's just get started. Uh, I guess the first thing to talk about in terms of Azure RTOS is what Azure RTOS means. Azure RTOS is the umbrella name for the runtime products, including the popular ThreadX kernel from Express Logic, also including the middleware, FileX, GUIX, NetX, NetX Duo, and USBX. Uh, virtually all of the Xs are covered. Anyway, the Azure RTOS name is now the new uh, Microsoft branded name for that collection of runtime products. So just at the very high level, um, you know, it's the uh, the same, you know, quality and, and uh, you know, um, breadth of service that uh, was there with the Express Logic products before, but just under a new brand name, Azure RTOS. What is an RTOS? Uh, we'll go quickly over this because this audience is pretty uh, savvy with what an RTOS is, but at the highest level, an RTOS is used to allocate processor time. So the application doesn't have to do it in a big while loop or some other mechanism. When you think of an RTOS, generally you want to think small and fast, uh, something that has a dedicated purpose uh, and something that requires real-time deterministic processing. In most cases, the RTOS is a uh, is used on a processor that's less that has less than 512 k bytes of memory, maybe less than 200 megahertz. Uh, doesn't require an MMU. That said, uh, there's plenty of applications with Azure RTOS uh, that you know deviate from that. So there's a uh, uh, ThreadX SMP, for instance, is a full SMP version of ThreadX, uh, and that's run on really high-end processors like a Cortex A53, for instance, that might be quad-core, um, you know, gigabit, you know, processing speed, megabytes of memory. Uh, and in those particular cases, Azure RTOS is used for the deterministic processing rather than the small footprint. Uh, all of that said, um, you know, typically you'll find Azure RTOS in MCUs, small constrained devices, more than uh, the, the high-end parts. What do embedded developers want in an RTOS? Um, you know, this varies greatly bet uh, between different embedded developers. Uh, generally, it's, uh, you know, allocating processor time, meeting real-time requirements, uh, you know, fitting into small memory areas, um, you know, dividing up the application into pieces instead of having everything in one big while loop. Uh, and then also the middleware, you know, having access to file system, network stack, GUI, USB, all of these things are typically what embedded developers want in an RTOS or a runtime solution. Uh, according to the um, uh, uh, 2019 uh, UBM embedded developer survey, these are the top 19 reasons um, developers chose an RTOS. Uh, I chose, I circled, circled, I put a red square around all of the real-time or processing requirements. So we have real-time capability, context switch time, scheduling efficiency. So those are more speed oriented or overhead oriented. Uh, and then the green box is, is a memory footprint. Uh, and then finally, there's a box on safety. Uh, Azure RTOS specializes on industrial uh, functional safety certification. Uh, and so I put the blue circle or blue box around safety certification. But if you really look at all of these uh, categories in terms of what embedded developers are looking for in an RTOS, really Azure RTOS uh, meets most of them, if not all of them, or is best of class in most of them, if not all of them just to give um, the audience an idea of what embedded developers have actually said they wanted in an RTOS in a survey, the most recent survey, I think. Uh, as for Azure RTOS, the things to uh, think about with Azure RTOS, always small, fast, and safe. On the size side, if you just use the basic scheduling in ThreadX, maybe two threads, just relinquishing control between each of them, uh, you're looking at a 2K byte uh, instructionary footprint for Azure RTOS. Uh, on the speed side, um, Azure RTOS uh, typically offers API calls in less than a microsecond and context switching in less than a microsecond. Uh, and then on the safety side, uh, there's nothing better than 23, 23 years of field-proven 
um, usage of an RTOS and, uh, and Azure RTOS or ThreadX has been in the field since 1997. Uh, we also have um, a bunch of functional safety certification. So we have taken uh, Azure RTOS ThreadX, FileX, GUIX, NetX Duo, and USBX through SIL4, ASLD, Medical Class C certification. Uh, and so that means that uh, you know these products and components are suitable for use in functional safety certification, whether that's automotive, industrial, medical, or anything that needs that level of certification. Uh, in addition to the uh, the core principles of small, fast, and safe, uh, Azure RTOS is a comprehensive, easy to easy to use solution as well. So we have you know all of these middleware components in addition to the kernel. Uh, and then we also have um, support for most of the popular embedded architectures and development tools. So that combined with the fact that we've uh, created all of these products in-house, we haven't purchased them or accumulated them from other sources. They all have the same look and feel. The documentation looks the same. Um, you know, it's really a, a totally uh, comprehensive solution. Uh, and then lately, or since our acquisition, uh, which was about a year and a half ago, uh, since we became part of Microsoft, we focused more on the IoT connectivity, making sure that a device using Azure RTOS can connect to Azure IoT the easiest way possible, and also using the least amount of resources. So these general areas are kind of the, the high-level value of Azure RTOS. Where is Azure RTOS being used today? Well, lots of places. Uh, according to VDC research, as of 2017, Azure RTOS was used in 6.2 billion devices worldwide. Most of the devices, or a, a huge chunk of them, are in mobile phones, not the core operating system in the mobile phone, obviously, but in peripheral chips around the core operating system. So cellular modem, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, any of the any of the peripheral uh, chips that surround and, and provide function for the uh, central processor on the, on a typical phone uh, would be Azure RTOS candidates, but we scale all the way down from uh, small Cortex uh, M devices and wearables uh, through medical devices, through home security, home automation, um, uh, through printers. You know, HP is one of our one of our big customers. Uh, and even in some space probes, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter uh, uses Azure RTOS ThreadX in its camera system. We were also in the Deep Impact space probes and the camera systems there too. So uh, virtually, you know, everything from really high deployed devices to deployments of two or three uh, in the space situation. A little drill down in terms of where the 6.2 billion uh, deployments come from. Uh, you can see that mobile phones is a is a huge chunk of that, roughly 3.4 billion. We uh, we believe that over time, um, and especially with the license arrangement with ST, where uh, end customers from using ST parts have a free production license to use Azure RTOS all the components uh, in their designs. We believe that all the other numbers will start evening out a little bit more. Uh, traditionally, we've been kind of heavy on on parts that were. Uh, super intensive and required the very best RTOS there was out there, you know, customers willing to pay money for it other than the free solutions. Uh, so, you know, now with Azure RTOS being free effectively, uh, it's certainly in the uh, context of uh, customers using ST parts, we believe that these numbers were gonna even out a little bit more. And I should mention too, that the 6.2 billion number is as of 2017. Uh, the run rate for that, the number of deployments per year uh, you know, extrapolating that to like 2000 or 2020 today would put that over, you know, 7 billion easily. We need to go back and get that refreshed, obviously. Uh, Azure RTOS system components. So Azure RTOS, as I mentioned earlier, is the umbrella name for all of the um, former Express Logic components, the runtime components, and also host components. And that includes the kernel ThreadX, the uh, FAT file system FileX, uh, the USBX stack, which provides a host and device uh, USB support, and then uh, NetX and NetX Duo, our TCP IP stacks, and then uh, GUIX and GUIX Studio and TraceX. GUIX Studio and TraceX are host tools used to help developers using the runtime tools. GUIX Studio is a, is a graphics design tool that runs on the host where you can do most of your UI design 
Uh, and then when you're ready to go, you press a button and that'll generate some C codes that can be imported into an embedded project uh, where the GUI X 2D graphics runtime engine is running. Uh, and that way you can do most of your, uh, you know, heavy work in terms of your UI design on a Windows system and not have to do the, the nitty gritty programming actually on the device side. Tracex is a uh, graphical event viewer for real-time events that happen on a ThreadX-based system. So you would enable uh, tracing on ThreadX and then, uh, and then enable it. And then once you're ready at either a crash or a breakpoint, whenever you wanted to look at what has happened in the system, you would export the trace buffer up to a host. And then you could graphically view that kind of like a logic analyzer, but system events in terms of the RTOS on Windows. Uh, and that will show you all context switches, all API calls, when threads are resumed, when threads suspend, you know, basically everything that's happening in the system is represented graphically. Uh, TraceX is always interesting to me because every time I look at a trace buffer, I see something I didn't expect. Uh, playing computer in my head versus reality is always kind of a fun uh, check some to have. So I'll go through uh, a brief uh, overview of each of the Azure RTOS components, starting with ThreadX. As I mentioned before, the minimal footprint for ThreadX is 2K bytes. Uh, and we're looking at sub-microsecond processing through the API set, SIL-4, ASIL-D, Medical Class C, Functional Safety Certification. And then ThreadX has some advanced features that aren't found in other RTOSs. Uh, these include preemption threshold, which is kind of like a two-priority system, uh, where threads have a priority when they're scheduled, and they have another priority once they're scheduled. Uh, and you can use this to reduce context switches, uh, there's even academic research that shows how you can use preemption threshold to guarantee schedulability within a set of threads. Um, anyway, it's a it's kind of a, a neat little technology uh, that is unique to ThreadX. We also have event chaining. Uh, everything that you, um, all the products, including ThreadX, have auto scaling. And auto scaling is basically the uh, idea that only what the application uses comes into the final image. So if you don't use, for instance, in ThreadX, if you don't use event flags, they don't appear. If you don't use byte memory pools, they don't appear. But if you use counting semaphores, they automatically are brought into the image at link time. Uh, we also have an add-on component to ThreadX called ThreadX modules. And ThreadX modules allow the application to build a separately linked and located piece of application code that contains one or more threads. Um, and that application code, that module, is created in a position-independent code and position-independent data format. So it can be basically loaded anywhere in the address space and executed. Uh, and the nice thing about that too is that for parts that have an MPU or MMU, we can uh, put a memory protection around that module code. So it's a way of kind of getting a lightweight process inside of what is a traditional RTOS kernel. Uh, and then finally, uh, consistent APIs, uh, extensive out-of-box examples. Um, there's a, and then lots of developers that have already used ThreadX out in the marketplace. Um, so uh, that's a, a quick overview of ThreadX. Moving along to FileX. FileX is our FAT12, FAT16, FAT32, and XFAT file system. Uh, the minimal footprint for FileX is around 9K bytes. Um, and it too has the functional safety certification like ThreadX. Uh, on the advanced feature set, FileX has uh, an optional fault tolerant mode where we will journal file system activities uh, and then in the um, uh, and then if there's a power loss or interruption of any sort on the next boot, we can figure out whether to either discard what was going on or complete what was going on and basically keep the file system intact. So there's no uh, there's no ability to uh, you know corrupt the file system on a power loss or reset or some other system event where things don't complete in the file system. Uh, we have extensive uh, performance advantages in FileX. Uh, we have a bunch of different caches for fat entry tables, logical sectors, even directory entries. So you can, depending on how much memory you have, you can you know get a lot more performance out of the file system. We have the ability to uh, do a pre-allocation of clusters. Uh, and we also have an add-on component to FileX called LevelX, which is a flash wear leveling uh, technology, uh, and that operates on NOR and NAND uh, flash parts. And again, uh, FileX auto scales, so only what you use as the file system comes into the image. And again, it's the uh, it's all written from the ground up. Uh, 
you know, by our by our engineering team. So it has the same API, same documentation layout, uh, and then there's a, a good amount of uh, out of box examples. GUI X is our 2D graphics runtime engine, uh, and it has a companion part, uh, you know, on the Windows side where you can do your Windows design using a, a Windows application, and it generates code that runs on the target. Um, basically, uh, about 13k bytes for minimal um, a minimal system running on the target. Uh, it's a pure C, no C++, so it's a pure C GUI package. Even though the concept of you know widgets and everything is very object oriented, like it's still written in C. Uh, again, it's a SIL4 ASLD medical class C certified, uh, and has extension of, uh, extensive widget set, uh, and it scales automatically like ThreadX and the other products. Uh, and again, a consistent API because it's all written from the ground up uh, by our uh, by our engineering team. Oh, I should also mention that GUI X does have the uh, Chrome Art uh, integration as well, so it's uh, integrated with the accelerators from ST. Uh, NetX Duo is, uh, in terms of the cloud side of things, is a is a very important piece of our uh, equation because it's indeed the TCP/IP stack along with the security protocols like TLS and MQTT that get you the base cloud connectivity. Uh, in terms of size, uh, for a minimal cloud connectivity. NetX Duo comes in around 50k bytes, um, and that is um, that's using ThreadX, uh, NetX Duo, the TLS stack, and MQTT. And with that, you can make a direct connection to Azure IoT Hub, um, and that's the that's about as bare bones as you can get. And we think that's best of class in the industry in terms of getting a small device to connect to um, the cloud. Uh, in terms of performance. NetX Duo is a zero copy implementation, so we can get near wire speed uh, and at the same time using minimal CPU usage. Um, and again, uh, NetX Duo is SIL4 ASLD Medical Class C functional safety certified. We've also taken the TLS stack and the software crypto library through security certification, EAL4 Plus and FIPS 140-2. Uh, you know, just uh, you can see on the block diagram that there's lots and lots of components with NetX Duo. Uh, you know, things that you don't normally see in a in a typical uh, embedded RTOS TCP/IP stack, like maybe MDNS, DNS SD, uh, PTP, uh, and so on. So it's a really rich set of components, um, also a rich set of cloud connectivity components and security components. Uh, IPsec is another thing that you don't generally see. Uh, in, uh, in a lot of um, uh, embedded TCP IP stacks. Uh, this is just a diagram showing the cloud connectivity pieces. Uh, you'll see Azure RTOS ThreadX and basically um, the TCP IP stack with IPv4 and IPv6 support, TLS, MQTT. Uh, that gives you the base connectivity to like Azure IoT Hub. But if you want easier connectivity, we also have integration with the embedded CSDK. And with that, you get all sorts of other things, including, including the integration with Azure Security Center, which is now called Azure Defender. Uh, and then there's also plug and play support and all the uh, all the neat things that you find, uh, all the neat services on the cloud side. But we make them easier through the embedded CSDK on the device side. And all that's integrated and has APIs that are similar to other Azure RTOS APIs. Uh, Azure RTOS USBX is our uh, USB host and device stack. Um, you'll see a fairly small footprint, lots and lots of class support, uh, one of the richest class supports of USB stacks available. Uh, it's going through the SIL4 ASLD medical class C certification today. Um, and again, it's like all the other products in terms of consistent API, extensive out of box examples, and uh, device host controller integration. I mentioned this a little bit before in the uh, NetX Duo section, um, and then earlier before in terms of the presentation. After acquisition, um, the former Express Logic team, now Microsoft team, has put a lot of work into making the IoT connectivity that much easier from the device perspective. Uh, and the key component in that is Azure IoT embedded SDK. Uh, and that's where all of the magic happens in terms of uh, integrating with Azure Defender, uh, plug and play support, uh, and just making things easier with a, a nice set of APIs that look like Azure RTOS APIs. 
Uh, and all of this is done with a kind of a minimal footprint mindset as well. The, uh, the new embedded SDK, for instance, is, a, is something that ranges from five to 10 K bytes in general in terms of instruction size. So uh, it's not a bulky, you know, uh, uh, you know, big thing for embedded devices any longer. And so now you can really leverage the, uh, the ease of use to Azure IoT without, you know, suffering a huge me memory penalty. I mentioned Azure Defender. Um, this integration is really encapsulated inside of the embedded SDK, but uh, Azure Defender leverages the uh, security capabilities of Azure. So we can, uh, uh, so just as an example, uh, when it's enabled by the device manufacturer um, uh, through the SDK, we can send telemetry information to the cloud that has like IP addresses, for instance. And then Azure Defender can analyze those against blacklist and see if, uh, see if, for instance, you know, there's something that the device is connecting to that isn't a good idea, and then it'll alert the uh, the appropriate folks on the uh, on the cloud side to let people know that there's a, a potential security problem. So um, all of this integration is is easy to use and basically just requires a, an enable API, um, you know, on the uh, embedded uh, SDK side. So we're real super excited about the uh, relationship with uh, ST. Um, prior to Acquisition Express Logic uh, was a premier partner to ST, and certainly now with Microsoft, uh, we're strengthening that relationship. Uh, you know, many many fold over. Uh, we already have support for most of the core architectures on the ST MCU and MPU family. Um, we also support many of the IDEs. The um, uh, you know, anything from STM32 cube IDE to IR to Kyle. Um, and then we also are doing all sorts of integration on the cloud side of things. Um, you can find some of this um, uh, sample applications on GitHub today. We'll be sharing that link a little bit later in this presentation. Uh, but, um, but there's sample applications for ST. We're also working with the ST engineering team um, you know, continuously uh, on a project to basically get all of this inside of the ST delivery mechanism. So in addition to what we have on GitHub today for free access, all of Azure RTOS and all of the integration will be available directly inside the tools themselves. So it'll be all ready to go, pre-integrated, ready to, ready to run. So there will be virtually no effort, you know, on, in terms of, you know, putting together any kind of uh, Azure RTOS uh, application. And then, of course, as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, we ST has, has basically purchased a license, so all ST customers uh, on the MC on the STM32 MCUs and MPUs will have a free license to use Azure RTOS. So it's kind of like the best of all worlds, all pre-integrated, you know, down the road, uh, and then freely licensed. So there's uh, no uh, no possible obstacles in terms of using Azure RTOS and ST parts, and you get to leverage all of the uh, commercial grade. Azure RTOS components and certification that we've had for many, many years. And this is the uh, Azure RTOS GitHub page. I mentioned briefly the samples repo. That's where you can go to find uh, pre-made turnkey zip file samples for Azure RTOS. Uh, and then you can also see all the other components. The full source code is there on GitHub. Uh, GitHub is uh, uh, applications or developers are able to take what's on GitHub today. Uh, they're able to develop with it freely, explore freely. It's all full source code. All of our products are there. Um, and then in addition, you know, as we go further with ST, all of this will be actually incorporated inside the ST tools. So you won't have to, you know, pick it up from GitHub or, you know, have two sources for, uh, um, you know, for getting Azure RTOS. So uh, with that, uh, you know, we think that this combined solution with ST is going to basically really speed up time to market for our mutual customers uh, and then leverage the benefits for of Azure RTOS, um, the reliable performance, the small footprint, and, and all of this will, you know, basically reduce risk too. There's no, you're not going to be developing with an RTOS only to find out at the end of the project that it's too slow. Uh, so now you're going to have a uh, ability to get industrial grade Azure RTOS, certified Azure RTOS, and field proven Azure RTOS into the designs, uh, you know, right away without any worry, without any risk. 
Uh, and then of course, for as, as your embedded designs start migrating to the IoT, which they naturally will, um, you'll have the easiest path to Azure IoT with Azure RTOS. Here is a slide with some resources. Um, <clears throat> Azure RTOS on the Microsoft website is at azure.com slash RTOS and GitHub, uh, the GitHub repos. You can either search for Azure RTOS on GitHub or just go to github.com slash Azure RTOS uh, and you can find all the documentation on the web as well. I think I'm probably getting close to my time budget. So uh, I wanna thank you for uh, your uh, uh, sharing your time with me today. Hopefully that was helpful and there'll be more deep dives coming for Azure RTOS. Thank you very much.